So just when everything seemed great with Bamboo Lab and 3D printing, their company decides to go and make an announcement that ticked a lot of people off. I'm talking about their recent blog post that announces a new firmware update with a lot of drastic changes, and that's whether you agree with them or not. This is Rohan here of Creatorific, and you'll want to stick around to hear how these changes will affect you if you're the owner of a Bamboo Lab 3D printer, or if you're thinking about owning one. So if you're visiting my channel for the first time, welcome. I cover 3D printing, mainly featuring my A1 and AMS Lite combo for multicolor printing, and I've recommended Bamboo Labs line of 3D printers to my viewers countless times based on my positive experiences. But I'd also be remiss if I didn't mention the bad along with the good. Before diving in, I'd just like to state as well that I'm not personally for or against Bamboo Lab or here to stir up controversy. I'm just here to present the information as it is and maybe offer some of my opinion along the way. But without further ado, let's jump in. So what's the big issue? Well, in this blog announcement that Bamboo Lab published not too long ago, they mentioned their new authorization control system that's baked into their latest firmware update. At this time, this new firmware version is only compatible with their flagship X1 Carbon model, but eventually it will apply to all of their 3D printers as well. The announcement details that with this new firmware version, the following functions will require authorization going forward. So that's binding and unbinding of your printer, initiating remote video access, performing firmware upgrades, initiating print jobs via LAN or cloud, and controlling motion systems, temperatures, fans, AMS settings, calibrations, etc. So essentially, once this new firmware is installed, all the main functions of your Bamboo Lab 3D printer will require authorization going forward. And it's important to note that when they say authorization here, they mean authorization from their end. So basically, you'll need the go ahead from Bamboo Lab to perform any of these essential functions. So of course, this had a lot of Bamboo Lab users in an uproar. And after voicing their feelings loud and clear, the company made a bit of a compromise in an attempt to smooth things over by later adding a developer mode that would allow users to maintain control over their network when they enable this feature. The trade-off though is that you would forfeit customer support and assume full responsibility should anything happen. So a bit of a win-lose. So in addition to those features that I mentioned being restricted and less authorized, there's now also the inconvenience of third-party slicers, such as the widely used Orca slicer, not being able to connect directly to Bamboo Studio and instead will need authorization through their new Bamboo Connect software. Bamboo Lab states that this is in order to avoid network vulnerabilities that could be introduced with third parties, but then there's the question of why implement this proprietary solution and not an interoperable one that would have more flexibility with third parties. Really quickly, I'd like to take a moment to highlight my paid sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay is an awesome company offering high quality custom prototyping and fabrication services. They also do 3D printing and offer less common materials like aluminum, stainless steel, and titanium. Their pricing is affordable, they have low order minimums, they provide instant quotes with just the click of a button, and they make ordering simple. Just upload your model, input your quantity and material type, then hit the submit request button. Your order can then be finalized after receiving more accurate pricing via email. Visit PCBWay.com to get started today. All right, let's jump back into it. Unfortunately, these changes don't end just there, and it's not just software that's affected, because the announcement mentions hardware as well. As nice as Bamboo Labs 3D printers are, the screens on the P1 and X1 series are widely considered outdated and lacking certain features like touch control, for example. So a lot of people had taken initiative to upgrade them to Big Tree Tech's Panda touchscreen instead. Well, if you had performed that upgrade, then install this new firmware update, it seems that you might be restricted from 3D printing unless you install that developer mode that I had mentioned earlier. The same one where you forfeit your customer service and assume full responsibility. They've left implementation fully up to developers, but they decided to keep the portal open and they've taken the position of, look, we told them what would potentially happen, they as in Big Tree Tech here, and they decided to disregard our warning and continue with sales. This information could be read and verified on TheVerge.com, where senior editor Sean Hollister published a pretty blunt and straight to the point interview with Bamboo Lab spokesperson, Nadia Yacoubi. A bit to Bamboo Lab's credit here, they did decide to jump into the hot seat and address things head on, but this could also be seen as just damage control, and for a lot of people, too little too late after pulling the rug out from under them. I've linked this article and Bamboo Lab's blog post in the video description. It's worth checking out for yourself if you have time, and if you read between the lines, you get a sense of the direction that Bamboo Lab might be headed in long term. In this article, Bamboo Lab provides some clarity for certain questions, but only vague and repeated responses for others. Examples. Question. Will Bamboo publicly commit to never requiring a subscription in order to control its printers and to print from them over a home network? Answer. 
for our current product line? Yes. Question. Will Bamboo publicly commit to never restricting the use of third-party filament in any way, shape, or form? Answer. For our current product line? Yes. Question. Will Bamboo publicly commit to its current and future printers permanently being remotely controllable over LAN without user account or internet access? Answer. For our current models? Yes. So the original announcement had understandably stirred up speculation and concern around some of these topics. And I don't think that these latest responses do a good job to put people at ease. Bamboo Labs announcement does mention that you can stick with old firmware versions or downgrade to avoid any of these restrictions. And that old firmware will still be compatible with newer versions of Bamboo Studio or the Bamboo Handy app. But this had a lot of people confused, including myself, since right within the terms of service published on their own website, in section 7.4, it states, your Bamboo Lab product will automatically search for and download new update packages to provide you with timely update services. These updates are designed to resolve cybersecurity loopholes and prevent new threats. And it's important that you accept and install security related system updates in a timely manner. Due to the importance of these updates, your product may block new print jobs before the update is installed and will immediately provide update notifications to help you understand the related information. So they're basically speaking out both sides of their mouth here, which really agitated the 3D printing community when they published their follow-up blog post to the announcement days later, stating that, recently, we've come across numerous social media posts spreading baseless allegations and untrue claims about Bamboo Lab. We want to make it absolutely clear that all of these claims are entirely false. And then in bullet points below, they provide statements for certain topics, which in my opinion are still question marks as of now, despite their attempts to reassure people. Some of these statements are contradicted by their own responses that were published on TheVerge.com days later. A lot of people felt that this was gaslighting and that Bamboo Lab was being disingenuous, and I don't necessarily blame them. Because when it comes down to it, it's not what they say that they may or may not do within their blog post, it's what they're capable of enforcing through their terms of service that counts. Also, an important question I think is, for how long will old firmware be supported and how long until it's outdated and lacking key features that are only found in the newer firmware versions? Okay, so I've given you all the details about this Bamboo Lab controversy, but the question is, do they have our best interest at heart or is this a demonstration of Bamboo Lab doing what suits themselves best? And also, how do we as a community that's typically rooted in open source technology feel about these adversely closed source practices? If you enjoy this content, please take a moment to like and subscribe to this channel, as well as turn on the notification bell. I really appreciate each and everyone's support, and it helps to continue to make videos like this. Well, from one angle, I think that Bamboo Lab has a legitimate basis for wanting to enforce security measures that can protect users against threats. But it seems like there are other solutions versus Bamboo Lab positioning its proprietary software as a bridge which restricts third-party access and functionality. I do understand that because of 3D printing's open source nature, a lot of networks are actually vulnerable to bad actors that can infiltrate and exploit your data and even seize control of your hardware, which is dangerous. And it is pretty wild to think that there aren't already standard protocols that can safeguard against network threats that are enforced across the industry. Now, is that all that Bamboo Lab's looking out for? That's clearly up for debate. And personally, I think that they're looking to safeguard their users while at the same time placing control parameters in place that go even further. It is important to note that Bamboo Lab has always been a closed source 3D printer manufacturer since they started back in 2020, contrary to their mainly open source competition at that time. I basically liken Bamboo Lab to Apple or Tesla, where they've married their proprietary hardware and software into a package and created a nice user experience. Their 3D printers basically have a consumer appliance feel that anybody, regardless of experience level, can operate with little to no fuss. But just like those companies, it creates a walled garden effect restricting third-party access and limiting freedom of use. It's kind of evident that Bamboo Lab aims its products towards more basic end users, but these actions might even be interpreted as them kicking aside their older core users for their newer target audience. Ones that are less concerned with modifying hardware and software and that probably wouldn't mind paying a monthly subscription should they enforce one at some point in the future. Sure, Bamboo Lab makes some great 3D printers, but with these changes, they're not gonna suit somebody that places value on freedom of use. There's some great alternative brands out there like Creality, for example, and they also have multicolor printing available as well. Or there's Prusa, which is a tried and tested brand that's trusted across the industry. Of course, for the many of us that are already invested in Bamboo Lab and are now getting blindsided by this announcement, it stinks to put it lightly. Maybe we should have taken caution knowing that we were buying from a closed source manufacturer 
and maybe you just didn't know. I guess all we could do is take this as a lesson going forward. A last concern I do have though, is will this become a trend or adopted practice with other companies going forward? The pack does tend to follow the lead of others that are successful, so I guess we'll see with time. I'll wrap up with this other bit of silver lining and good news, and that is if you only ever use Bamboo Labs hardware and software, then you're pretty much unaffected by these changes for now. Personally, I only use Bamboo Studio Slicer, so aside from functions requiring authorization, whenever my A1 does have that newer firmware installed, I should be able to continue 3D printing just fine. This isn't my preference, of course, but for now, I'll just delay updating my firmware for as long as possible, and I suggest that all Bamboo Lab users do the same thing. So that's it regarding this whole Bamboo Lab firmware update fiasco, and I did my best to gather what information I could and deliver it to you in a non-biased way. If anything further of significance develops, I'll be sure to keep you informed, but I'd also love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. As mentioned earlier, I've linked any of the resources in the video description so that you can check them out if you're interested. I've also shared the things that I use within my 3D printing setup, plus my preferred brands for 3D printers, materials, and accessories. Be sure to check out my other videos if you like 3D printing content, and please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. Thanks for watching, and until next time, see you then.